From inflation to interest rates, today's ongoing disruptions present opportunities for investors. In this series, our portfolio managers explore how PIMCO's deep expertise across public and private markets gives investors the flexibility to navigate the ever-evolving landscape. Our ability to invest across the capital structure is something that is differentiated versus almost all of our competitors. I think it's just the scale of all the different mandates we have, um, all the different buckets of capital we have, and so it creates this scenario where we're a major counterparty for you know every bank out there across the firm, and that, that allows us to source opportunities and see 99.9% .9 of available opportunities out there. We're a part of a very select few who have that capability to, to look at you know, opportunities um, up and down the stack, but also you know, irrespective of what the size of the opportunity is. We manage close to 200 billion in commercial real estate assets globally now across public and private markets. And I think there's real strength to, the, to our size um, because we've got over 280 real estate professionals on the private side sourcing at sort of what I call the grassroots level through real estate industry contacts. We've got Matt and folks on the public side who are, you know, interacting and doing business with these large financial institutions on a day-to-day -day basis. So we are sourcing from the grassroots level, we are sourcing through um, channels that uh, the public side has directly with these financial institutions. And then, I mean, even at a higher level, we, we are able to source at the C-suite level. We invest across the risk return spectrum. It just really gives us credibility as a real estate counterparty that very few uh, can match. I was thinking about how I interact with Matt on a daily basis. It's sort of, it's, there's sort of two main components to it. Matt and his team are a source of ideas on the, in terms of public real estate securities, but they are also a source of ideas uh, on the private credit side because they do so much business with these banks. Um, oftentimes, your counterpart at the banks that deal in CMBS are also controlling the private loans. So Matt and that's in the CMBS desk will see a lot of private loan opportunities, which is especially attractive in the current environment. Um, so it, some of it is just idea generation from Matt and his team. But the other is Matt's a, a thought partner. Um, what I mean by that is whether it's thinking about how risk is being priced relative value across the capital structure, um, how deals are being structured. Um, we talk on a regular basis just to compare notes. I provide sort of that color to Matt and then Matt also provides what he's seeing. Information sharing is something that's incredibly important because um, I can give him a sense over what debt investors on the public side are looking for, what they're valuing, how stuff's trading, uh, what that might imply for valuations on buildings, uh, where the opportunity set really is, um, and, and give them a sense for, for when they're pricing their potential investments. You know, how does that compare versus you know, public side debt? I, I would say you know, the, the, the culture um, across the portfolio management team is really to think about um, the best, getting our investors exposure to real estate in the best risk adjusted manner. And I think that partially contributes to the collaboration because we're all sort of have that mindset like how do we get, how do we find the cheapest assets, whether it's in the public market, whether it's in the private market. That was a very unique time, early days of the pandemic, massive drawdown in markets generally, but uh, particularly the CMBS market. and. Of course, given our position in the CMBS market, we were seeing all those opportunities. And literally, I remember um, we had, at the time we were working remote because it was the early days of the pandemic. And so we had all our like stations set up like in our apartments. I had two screens up. One screen was Matt and the other folks on the CMBS desk. And the other screen was everyone on the private real estate team. And literally Matt um, and would tell us what bonds that they were seeing and which ones he thought were interesting, and, for, and then we would designate who on the private side was gonna dig in, and we had to move fast, because it's not just, you know, it's not just about seeing it, but you have to make a decision quickly. It was very unique in the sense of, it was almost like a name, name your price type environment. Um, and at the time, you know, a lot of what we focused on was the stuff that people were, you know, the most fearful of, which was a lot of hotel exposure, because, you know, the, the cash flows went from, you know, X to zero overnight because of, of quarantine. So, you know, that was a space where we're, we're going, we're on the phone talking about, 
you know, where were values in 2009? And how does that compare versus the debt we're looking at now? Like how bad could it get? And I think it was just, it was a really good example of, you know, they dropped what they were doing because a lot of their deal, a lot of the deals, you know, fell apart, understandably. And, and pivoted to working on the public side. And um, yeah, and it turned out to be um, a fantastic opportunity for us.